we want to welcome our viewers and listeners across the globe to yet another refreshing time as we study the word of god together and the bible study being uh, sponsored by the diocese of Ife african communion as we are aware we are winding up gradually the study that we started in january based on godly parenting in the cosmopolitan world learning we have treated uh so many topics and i'm quite sure uh, those topics have been a blessing to your home either corporately or even to our life as parents of young ones into the future uh let us pray father we want to thank you because you are god and as we look at your word once again this day we pray that you send your blessing to your inspiring word amen and to do that which you want in our homes and life through jesus christ our lord mm-hmm. let me welcome uh daddy who is sitting to my left and who will be introducing himself daddy you are welcome can we know you better dr shola alibabu you are welcome sir God bless you. and our mommy i am mrs tommy akebami you are welcome mm-hmm. ma God will use you both to bless us this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we are looking at an important topic, uh, not quite new, but at least, like I said, we are winding up and so we are bringing everything into a compact. The topic says harmony at home, the impact on children upbringing. Harmony at home and impact on children upbringing. And our main trust of test is Psalm 127, verses 3 to 5, and Luke 18, 15 through 17. Mommy will be helping to read Psalm 127, and Daddy will be helping to read Luke 18, 15 through 17. Yes, ma'am. Psalm 127, 3 to 5. Children are the heritage from the Lord. All strings a reward from Him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children, both in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. Thank you, ma. And Luke, daddy? Luke 18, 15 to 17. And he brought unto him also infants, and that he would talk there. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter the arena. Thank you, sir. And the aim of the study is just to teach that home environment is where family members treat each other with respect and a place where problems are solved together to protect children against emotional, psychological uh, learning and so share problems later in life. And uh, by way of introduction, uh, we know that raising children is not an easy task. And so, no matter the child, no matter the situation, every parent longs for obedience from their offspring. And parenting or home bringing style is the best approach as raising harmonious home. By design, they offer a relational approach to raising children and that is by making children to be parents and constituted authority so that you can build a healthy relationship not just as from what you have said children being an inheritance of god and then as a blessing god wanting to invest in them so that they can be like a weapon in our hand in the, in the hands of the parents and uh, in building up the home and the nation into the future. And of course, that's why Jesus Christ will model it and say, children should come, children should be encouraged, 
students should be part and parcel of the society. And for this to happen, they must be properly brought up. And they cannot be brought up in such a way in a disarray, in a home that is not uh, harmonious, where the father go to the left and the mother go to the right. The desire, the expectation of God, of course, cannot be met. It's a prayer that the expectation of God for our children to be brought up in a godly way, the Lord will release unto us as parents in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we quickly go into question and for discussion because we have a lot to discuss within the limited time at our disposal. Now, the first uh, discussion question here say, as parents, we talk in terms of harmony, harmony. How should parents really treat the children? How do we, what is the expectation of God? in treating these children uh, the home environment. Uh, can we start from mommy, then we give to daddy uh, briefly. All right, thank you, sir. According to where we are to be, where is to be read, That's Ephesians, Ephesians 5, chapter 4. 5, verse 4, says that, nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are not which are out of place, but rather give thanksgiving. With the topic we have, harmony at home, what we are saying here is that there should be unity in training our children. And whatever we will not want them to do, they, which, they should not be part of us. They should not see it in us. The Bible was talking about uh, kohas joking. It was talking about uh, different type of things even when we start from verse 3, it's talking about sexual immorality, talking about impurity, talking about greed. All those things, we as parents should unitedly teach those children to be far from those things. And we also, as parents, should be far from it. They should see us as model in our home so that whatever we teach them, they will understand it. We should walk the talk, show them the positive behavior that is needed in them. By then, the children will be able to walk in it and will be able to build a, an harmonious uh, home. We should trust them and build that trust also in them. Let's trust our children. If we trust them, they will do more and we will, we will raise them for, for Christ. At the same time, we should build courage in them. The courage to say yes when it is time to say yes and to say no when those things are not godly. That courage Will be, must be built in them. Also, to build courage in them to weather the storm of life because there are storms, there are things they will face out, outside the world. There are things they will face in their school, in their places of work. But if we as a parent, harmoniously, in unity, we build that courage in them and we give them the words of God that is, that is needed to sustain them, they will grow in unity and in love of Christ. Thank you very much. Home oh, environment. How do we treat the our children? The most important work that God has given mankind is to raise or learning of the children for future generations, which are to be saved. So, and you want to do this, we want to have this respect for, 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 for our children, we must always keep them on their toe in order to be able to be a continuity after we might have departed. So the home environment must be very, very serene, must be very, very cordial, must be full of love, so that when you give love to the child and you allow him or her to express her mind, all these things will encourage the child to be a child of God. So we must transmit love. Yes. And then also add to what mommy have said. That is the responsibility of parents. Yes. Now we, in doing that, there are certain ways that can be accomplished. And that is what the second discussion question is actually trying to address by saying what are the, what are the child's upbringing oh, methods? Yes. In other words, for all these things that we have said, what are the complements to achieving uh, those things? 
Uh, we will do some readings from the scriptures since the Bible study quickly. We we'll look at Hebrew 11 20. Mommy will we'll be doing that. Daddy Joe 42 15. I will try to take 1 Timothy 5 8. And then also uh, we we'll look at 1 Timothy 3 4. Mommy will also be uh, helping to do that. Hebrew 11 20. Hebrew 11 20. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. Okay. So what, what can we bring out from there? From here, we can see that Abraham, Isaac, he blessed the children. He was preparing them for future. He blessed them. That shows there is unity. There is unity in the home. We as parents, we must be praying for our children instead of cursing them. We must be praying for them and be blessing them so we can prepare them for a, a brighter future. Okay. So prayer to bless. Yes. Uh, Job 42.15. What do you have? Job 42.15. Yes. And in all the land where no women found so fair are the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their children. So well, how, what can we do as parents there? Uh, as a parents, the child we raise up should be our pride. And it, it depends on the way we raise them up that can be our pride. See, when you have them, you give them equal opportunity, whether irrespective of sex, whether they are male or female, because they are your children. Because Job has brought these children up very well, they become pride of the family. So our children, in the community would uh, show the type of person the son of mother and father we are and of course like we said a prepare for them an inheritance yes. into the future yes. so investment they invested yes. uh th th that's way to actually bring these children up the first timothy 5 and verse 8 uh says anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. What is that uh, teaching us, man? Uh, what that is saying is that we as parents, you know, we are talking about harmony in the home. The both parents, both the wife and the husband, must be ready to provide for the home, provide for the children, provide them with good shelter, provide them with materials provide them with the money that is needed for them to live their life in a godly way. So we must be ready to provide for them so they will not suffer. Because children that are suffering, they are prone to satanic attack. Okay. Thank you. And provision. Yes, sir. Available yes, sir. Through joint effort. Effort of, of both parents, parents mother and, and uh, the father. First Timothy 3, 4. Finally, what uh, lesson do we have there in bringing up our children? First Timothy 3 4. Mommy? First Timothy 3 4 said he must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him. He must also do so in a manner worthy of full respect. Okay, so what is the challenge there? The Bible reading is very clear that we as family jointly, we must see our children, we must train them. We must encourage them to obey us as parents. They must obey the father. They must obey the mother with their joint, joint efforts. And that must be done in a very manner that is full of respect. Both parents, the father and the mother, must respect each other. By doing so, the respect will now flow to the life of the children. And children, we must, children we must also expect our children to respect us and to respect people around us. So, so thank then, you, sir. Uh, we want to thank God for all this one. We know we have touched on some of these things before. We are just uh, trying to make sure that we remind us as individuals and as family. Now we go on. What are the importance of good parenting? Now, if you if put in all that is necessary, uh, what are those things that you think will come out of it? Proverbs twenty nine seventeen. That is, we have to read, and then we. We'll into it and then first chronicle 29 19 those are the two 
uh, scriptural passages you may be able to oh, take because of time. 29, 29 yes. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give the light unto thy soul. Okay. A well brought child, a well created child, is a pride of the family. It will show, it will indicate the type of family from where that child has come from. Okay. And uh, if you train your child, if you correct them when well, they do something wrong, in fact, when you go to the bigger society, you will be proud of the child. Yes. And the child will be blessed. And the child will try to reform the, 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 the entire community. It will be somebody that who can be the role model to other children. Mm. Because in terms of achievement, in terms of uh, moral uh, formation, in terms of uh, behavior, all over, they really know that this boy has come from the godly home. The godly home. And then the, the society is there, we, we, we reap godly character, ba godly leadership uh, along that line. Okay, mommy. Chronicle, first, first Chronicles, Chronicles chapter 29, 29 verse 19. 19. Yes. And give my son Solomon the whole hearted devotion to keep your command, status, and decrees, and to do everything to build the palatial structure for which I have provided. Okay. If you look at this scripture, we will discover that uh, Solomon was, uh, David was praying. And while he was praying, he was particularly praying for his son that God should give him the heart of devotion. We as parents also, we should not say because we can pray, because we can preach the word of God, we should pray for our children also to have that heart of devotion, the heart of worshiping God, the heart of working for God. We should pray such prayer for our children. Even look, looking at this uh, the, the passage, David was praying for Solomon that he, David, has started something to do for God, that God should give Solomon the grace to complete it. That is a prayer of continuity, that I want my child to continue what I'm doing for good God, works. the good works I'm doing. How many of us parents can, can, can say that in the presence of our children, that this thing that I'm doing, continue. So we should do good things so that I, I pray to God to let our children continue in that realm. Because the society will read from that. Yes, the society will read from the from the child. They will want, even after the death of a parent, or when a, child, a, a parent is old, they want to see what the, what the children, we what continue. they are doing, what they will continue, either in the church or in the society. And if the, the children are able to continue with what their father or their parent has been doing, ah, that is a good name, even for the family. It, so It uh, makes it very easy for God. To fulfill his promise, his promise for that for that, for that for that family on the family if the child is well parented if the child obeys god's commandment if the child uh, keeps god's statue so it will be easier for god to fulfill the covenant that he has with the entire family like uh, david because he's a man of god's uh, heart Therefore, God made the uh, covenant with it that he will never lack a son to ascend the throne of a... Uh, that means, if, yeah. that means if, he's, if he do the research yes. and get to a certain <laughs> day, we trace <laughs> the genealogy, it should yeah, be, the, the, it should the, be the David, that is there. Yes. There. <laughs> That's great. That's <laughs> great. I, I hope we are, we are learning. We are learning. And, and finally, there are some scriptural passages here that we want us to take. Uh, then uh, we'll be able to enlighten more on our duty, which is very, very important in child upbringing. Uh, there are quite a lot, but we take one or two. Uh, Titus 2 4, mommy will take that. Daddy will help take uh, Matthew 19 13 to 14. And then we will look at uh, Proverbs 13 24. And then we wind it up with Deuteronomy 11 19. Uh, mommy, Titus, Titus 2, 4. We clear because then, of time. Then, they urge the younger women to love their husbands and children. This scripture is talking to women in particular. They want them to love their husband, to love their children, and to train their own daughters 
their own sons to love their spouse too you know there are even some children they will look at the way their parents love each other they will want to say okay i want to marry a man like my like my oh, dad right. i want to marry a woman like my dad that is because the the, the, the daughter has seen that good trait in the mother and the son has see that good trait in the father so we as parents god is expecting us to train our children to respect and to love our spouse and our children and their children too okay so duty of parents is to make sure that they prepare, they prepare that their children for for home, for, 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 for their own home. future home aha yes that is it daddy matthew 19 13 14 then were there brought unto him Proverbs little children, 24. that he should put his hands on them, and pray, and the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children not, and forbid them not, to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Okay. As parents, our primary work on them is to put the full step of our children on the path of the Lord. The kingdom. Kingdom. Teach them the word of God. You know, mm. Anna asked in some first Samuel uh, first, uh, 26 to 28. Anna asked God of uh, Samuel. And uh, she was given. And he went home to win him because whenever they are coming for the whether Passover or any feast or festival, they will bring him along with them. They, hand him over they him. have trained him on along the path of God, and after his went, he brought him to come and submit it to God. Because we have to train our child and make sure that the path we follow, the path of salvation, the path of victory, do not depart, depart from it. Thank you very much. So, we see that bringing and protecting against uh, vulnerability, very, very important to achieve. Uh, Proverbs 13, uh, verse uh, 24. 24. Uh, let's quickly read that one. Proverbs chapter 13. Whosoever spare the rod hates their children. Okay. But the one who loves the children is careful to discipline them. So what is the duty there? The duty is that we should not be we should not lag in training our children and discipline them anytime they hear. But what the Bible is now saying here is that we should be very careful when we discipline them. We should discipline them in love. Even I was saying that whenever our children hear and we want to discipline them, we should let them know the reason for whatever yeah. discipline we want to give them. If they know the reason for they are being punished, they will not go into it again. There, 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 there was this joke that somebody, whenever I want to cane the children, after I'm telling them, we say, Lord, I raise this skin up to you. And as, as I'm giving this child this skin, you let him remember that he must love you more. So each one must teach him how to love you more. <laughs> it may yes. look uh, funny, but then it's not. It, it, it's not. It's not so funny. Ah, it is. Uh, it it's is not just so telling funny. that. Look, I'm correcting you for your own. Even good. my children do call my king Jesus King. <laughs> oh, Jesus King. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. The, 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 the children are highly vulnerable to peer influence. That's why the parents must be at a lot to make sure that. Any wrongdoing is corrected. It's corrected immediately. And if it warrant light punishment and love, you give it to them. Because you can't afford a spoiled child. child. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you very good. much. And finally, Deuteronomy 11 19, which gives the summary of uh, uh, this essential duty. Deuteronomy 11 19. And you shall teach them your children. Speaking of them, when thou sittest in thy ah. house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and, and when, when you get up. thou rises up. Okay, it's so. very pertinent. Family altar is very 
pertinent. When you are going to bed at night, read the Bible and preach a short word of God to them. When you wake up in the morning, read the Bible depending on your time and also make sure that they pray. So the family altar is very, 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 very important. Mm -hmm. You have to constantly teach the, the children the word of God word so of that God. they can be found And we even spirit. heard that apart from the uh, devotion morning or night, every available means that we feel we can use to teach our children. The Bible says we should put it on their neck. We should put it on the wall. We should put it at the entrance of our house. The world chart in our house, in our house, the calendar, the everything must speak of so what we, we want saw, them. We saw them in the world. In the world, yeah. everything they see around us must be something that will train them, them, that will point them to, to, the, to kingdom. the kingdom of God. Thank you very much. So, uh, we want to thank God for this contribution. And in conclusion, by working to cultivate trust, affection, and respect. Parents and other adults in the home can create a place where family members feel safe, loved, and supported. A refuge from the storms of life. Parenting has got to be the hardest and most rewarding job that mm -hmm. God has ever given to us. Yes. And we often question if we are doing it right. Did we miss anything? Mm -hmm. Is it too late to be right parent for my children? Mm -hmm. Is my child learning all the need from me and these are issues these are posters that we can look at how am i doing it how is the home front we can ask ourselves if in sincerity all these things we are sharing how do they reflect in our home how do they transfer to our children and perhaps we haven't got there uh, that is the purpose of studying together it's not to condemn anybody but to bring us to correction and then we can still get it right even if the children those children have already out of our room there's there's uh, we can do a follow-up trap so that they too will not fall into whatever we call error of our own life and i pray that as we are doing that god himself will help us through and through in jesus name Amen. Amen. Uh, we are concluding with the food for thought we should not say that differences disagreements and problems are always a bad thing they are unavoidable show your children god's love be quick to forgive don't oh. hold grudge look for what is best and speak gently into areas of their lives that need growth and collection and as we are doing this all these things together as spirit we are sure that god himself will be doing his own part for our children let us pray Father, we thank you for the little time you have spent in sharing your word. We pray that this word you will use to encourage us to do the right thing as parents in bringing up our children, especially in this challenging period. May we be found worthy of that which you have called us into as parents. May we not be found wanting in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Blessed be your name, Lord. Amen. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.